Midjourney is great for creating stunning artwork, but sometimes the images need a little more polish to achieve truly breathtaking results. Today, I'll show you some essential touch-up tricks that can be used to elevate your Midjourney art. I'll be using Affinity Photo, but these methods will work in any program, including GIMP, Krita, and Photoshop. First, let's look at contrast. I'm here on the Midjourney site, and I found this pretty cool image of a samurai, but it's looking a little drab. I'll copy this image into Affinity Photo. I'll right-click. I'll say Copy Image. Now I'm here in Affinity Photo, and I'll select File, New from Clipboard. So here we have our image. Now let's look at the histogram for this image. I'll select Window, Histogram, and you can see why it looks gray. A histogram shows the count of the pixel values in our image. So on the left, we have the blacks. On the right, we have the whites. And in between, we have our grays. The height of the graph represents how much of that there is. So what we can see here is that there's very little true blacks. And there's very few true whites. So our image is compressed in the center here. One way to fix this is with the Levels tool. Now this is available in almost every graphics editing program. In Affinity Photo, you can click the button here that says Adjustments. Now I'll click Levels. Now you can see the Levels tool also helpfully displays the same histogram here. So the question is, what do we really want to do with this tool? Well, the things I care about are the black level and the white level down here. What I want to do is close these gaps. So I'm going to click the black level here. I'm going to drag it to the right, like so. What I've done is I've basically eliminated this area here. If you look at the histogram, you can see it's dragged it to the left. So it's taken those grays and has pulled them to the blacks. Similarly, I can do the same thing with the white level. So I'll drag this to the left. And where you drag it to kind of determines on your own style. Let's put it somewhere there. You want to look at the image, of course, to see how it looks when you do this. Let's go right there. Let's look at the before and after results. So before, after, before, after. Let's look at a more realistic image here. We have a woman in a cafe sipping some coffee. Maybe I just want to make the whites and darks a little stronger. So I'll right click on it. I'll click copy image. Let's bring it into Affinity Photo. Now we could use the levels tool again. Let me show you another way using the curves tool. In Affinity Photo, that's an adjustment. So I'll click the adjustments here. And I'll select curves. The curves tool shows us a histogram again, like the levels tool. But the behavior of the tool is a little bit different. From left to right, we have the input values. So on the left, we have our blacks. On the right, we have our whites. Those are the inputs. Bottom to top is also black to white. And it represents the output values. So when we have a perfectly 45 degree angle, there's no change between input and output. Our 50% here gray. Our black is being mapped to black. Our white is being mapped to white. And all the values in between, like 50% gray, are hitting this midpoint and mapping to a 50% gray. The most common way to use this tool is to simply make an S-curve. So what I'll do is I'll increase the brights up here. I'll drag this up. And you can see it's going to get a little bit brighter. It's lifting the output. Then what I can do is make the darks darker. So I'll click and drag down here, pull this down. And our darks are getting stronger. So you can see I just made this simple S-curve here. I increase the whites, decrease the blacks, and that's how we strengthen the contrast. Let's look at before and after again. Before, after, before, after. And you can go back in and adjust as you like. So maybe you don't want the brights to be that bright, but maybe you do want the darks to be darker. It's really gonna be based on your personal style. Now let me delete this adjustment for a second. Most programs do have a contrast adjustment. So in Affinity, I'll click the adjustments here. I'll select contrast. And you can see it's basically a linear scale, so I can increase the contrast, or I can decrease it. This is a tool you can also use, but personally I prefer the Levels or Curves tool a little bit more. They just give you a little extra flexibility in how you apply the effect. Now let's look at color. I have this image of a dragon here. It looks pretty cool, but let's boost the colors a little bit more. So once again, I'll copy the image. Let's bring it to Affinity Photo. Now right off the bat, we can just add a quick curves adjustment. Let's do that. I'll select the curves here. Give it that S curve. Just makes it a little bit stronger initially. Now let's look at the color specifically. One adjustment I like is called vibrance. So I'll click my adjustments here and I'll select vibrance. Now you see vibrance and saturation together. Vibrance is basically a smarter version of saturation. It's not gonna make your image look terrible if you increase it to the max. For example, if I increase the saturation all the way, you can see it looks a little too strong. So let's put that down here. Vibrance is a little more subtle, so I'll increase this up here. 
And I think we have a good effect there. You can also increase the saturation a little bit if you like. So let's do this. Again, this is totally gonna depend on the style of art you're going for. So I've maxed out the vibrance here and increased the saturation a little bit. Let's look at before and after. Before, after, before, after. So that's a really simple adjustment you can make to boost the color a bit. Something you may also wanna do is selective recoloring. So for example, in this image here, maybe I don't like the fact that the grass is red down there. Let's zoom in. Maybe I just wanna make it green like everything else. So what we can do is paint over it. So I'll add a new pixel layer here. I'll click add pixel layer. This will depend on the program, how you do this. And I'll select a paintbrush. For my brush, I'll just use something soft and round. And I can select some green color on my canvas. I'll hold alt and click. So now I have green here. So I can paint like this. And obviously this looks pretty horrible. The key here is to change the blend mode of this pixel layer. So with my pixel layer selected, I'm gonna click this drop down here and I'll go down to the color or hue blend modes. So let's choose color. And you can see it looks much better. Let's zoom in. I can paint this other area in. I can paint out this red. And I can make it all green. Now just making it all the same color of green doesn't look that great. Let's sample some other color of green. I'll sample this one over here, alt click. And maybe we can just add some little details here. Just add a little variation so it doesn't all look the same. And the more time you spend on this, the better it's gonna look. Let's get another green, this one maybe. Maybe take one from over here. Maybe grab some of this. And you can touch it up as you desire. So if I alt click on this pixel layer, that's what I painted over it. And then with the color adjustment, it added that color here. So before, after, before, after. I use this method a lot for recoloring eyes. So I'll select my paintbrush again. Let's create a new pixel layer. And I'll zoom in here. And I'll select some type of blue. And I'll paint over her eyes like this. Let's get that blue in there. Let's do this other eye here. You can choose whatever color you like. Now I'll zoom out. Now I'll change the blend mode of this pixel layer. So I'll select the drop down here and I'll select color. And here you can see the result. Before, after, before, after. Sometimes you wanna draw attention to a particular part of an image. I recently generated this image of a girl and her polar bear companion. I knew I wanted her hair and her clothes to stand out a little bit more. So let's check out how I did this in Affinity Photo. Now here's the image with just some basic adjustments. This was before, after, before, after, but I still wanted her golden hair and red clothes to be stronger. So once again, I added a pixel layer here. I got my paintbrush. I made the brush a little bit bigger. Let's go into her hair. And the key thing about this pixel layer is you want to set it to saturation. So with the drop down here, I'll go down and I'll set it to saturation. Now the color you choose doesn't really matter because it's just going by saturation, but I'll choose something gold just so it's relatively close. And you wanna kinda of get it so it's nice and bright there. Now if I paint over her hair, you can see it's becoming much more saturated. I'll paint down here. Of course you wanna be careful here. Hair's kind of tricky. But I like to max out the saturation here, then you can dial it down later. So let's get some paint going here. So here we have her hair much more saturated. Now, if this is way too strong, which it probably is, you can turn down the opacity of the layer. So I'll dial it down here. Maybe even like 40% is enough. Let's see how it looks before and after. So before, after, before, after. Now, sometimes when you max saturation, you start to realize that some colors weren't what you thought they were. So let's zoom in here. You can see there's this blue part of her hair there. You could erase it, so if I select the eraser tool down here, I could just paint it out like that. Or you could just recolor it, so I could add another pixel layer, set it to color, and I could just paint over it like so. Let's get rid of some of these blues. 
Again, you don't want to make it all the same color because that's kind of boring. But for blatant stuff like that, it can help. So in her hair, we have before, after, before, after. And if you like, you can do the same thing with the clothes. So let's add another pixel layer. I'll call these clothes. I'll set the saturation. Get my paintbrush. Make sure it's nice and bright there. This one's definitely very strong. Maybe too strong, but you can always dial down the strength. And let's turn down the opacity. Maybe something much more subtle, like so. So let's look at the effect of all the adjustments. Before, after. Before, after. Now let's talk about in-painting. And this is where we can fix little problems in our images. This is possible to do in Midjourney itself. So I'll go to the edit page. So I'll click edit. And now I can upload an image that I've worked on before. So let's click edit uploaded image. I'll bring in my dragon that we looked at earlier. I'll click open. And now I have my brush here set to erase. Now I can do is erase parts of the image that I don't like, specifically little details. So I don't like all these little red things in the sky. Let's get rid of this here. I'll get rid of all these little red petals. I can make my brush smaller if I like, so let's do this. I'll just click out these things here. I want this guy to be nice and clean. Sometimes Midjourney has a tendency to add these little details in that you don't want and they can distract from the overall image. But it's going to be up to you whether or not you want these types of things in there. So I think this is a pretty good edit. Now I'll click Submit. And you can see I get an error. And the reason is we have to give it some type of text here to describe our image. You can try clicking Suggest Prompt here, although lately I've noticed it hasn't been working. I'll just type my own description here. Dragon in a landscape. That's close enough. Once I hit enter, we'll wait for it to generate. And now it gives us four results to choose from. I'll click through them. I think they all look pretty good. When you see one you like, you can scroll down here and choose upscale to gallery. And then it'll be shown in your gallery here. So it's generating. And here we have our result. Now note that if you generate an image here, it's also easy to do the in painting. So let's say knight in shining armor. I'll hit enter. It's going to generate my image. And here we can see our results. If I maximize one of them, from here I can go and I can click into the editor with this button down here, editor. And then I have that same tool to paint out what I don't like. So maybe I don't like this hand. I'll paint that out. I can click submit. And then once again, if I go back to my create tab, it will try to regenerate that area. And then we get our new results to choose from. Finally, let's look at how to draw focus to your subject by selectively darkening part of an image. Here's an image I generated recently for a thumbnail. It's a woman in front of an explosion. I want to bring a little more attention to the character here. So I'll copy my image again. I'll bring it into Affinity Photo. One of the adjustments you can use here is called Vignette. Now this is a live filter, so I'll click on the live filters here. And I'll choose Vignette. Once again, many graphics programs have a Vignette tool. And if I adjust the exposure, you can see the effect it's having. So I'll decrease the exposure. And we can see as it's creating a shaded effect on the edges. I can adjust the hardness of it, the scale, the shape. You want to adjust it to your design, of course. But it just helps bring the eye to the center of the image a little bit more. So this is before, after, before, after. If you're using text in an image, you may also want to darken the area behind it to add a little more contrast. Here's another thumbnail I did recently. I felt that the text here just wasn't standing out enough from the background. So what I did is I drew a rectangle. You can just change the angle here. I put it behind my text. Let's go down here. And then I added a gradient effect to it. So I'll go to the gradient tool. Just drag this out here. Let's make that black. Let's make this white. Then you can change the blend mode of this rectangle. So let's try multiply. You can adjust as you see fit. 
But I think it just helps add a little more contrast behind the words. Before, after. Before, after. Do you think you'll use any of these techniques on your mid-journey images? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.